Players are getting ready for the first round of the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Featuring new cards from Cosmic Eclipse, we've got Nick Hunter on the left with his Reshram and Zekrom. Tag Team GX deck and Melvin Davila on the right with his Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. We know Melvin has been playing Mewtwo and Mew for weeks now and has seen a lot of success with the deck. So far, he's done a great job with it. Potentially has a Mega Low Pony to add to the list. Thank you so much, Josh, for the sub and the kind words. Love Full Grip and this stream. Miss you all. Be back soon, hopefully. Yes, Josh, we miss you. Hopefully you're doing well and recovering, and uh, hopefully we get to see you sometime soon, my man. Thank you so much for the sub uh, and the camaraderie, Josh. Um... So Melvin, with the Mewtwo and Mew deck, thinking that maybe some great catchers, which I do believe I see in his opening hand, and maybe a Mega Low Pony and Jigglypuff Tag Team GX in this Mewtwo deck. And Nick Hunter playing his own version of Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX. I did see that he does have... The Naganadels in this list, Naganadel from Lost Thunder to charge up energy onto the bench and give some fuel to this Fabled Flare Bolts attack, which is capable of dealing 270 damage when you discard three either basic fire or lightning or any combination of those two energy cards from your benched Pokemon. So the idea is to either Welder or use Ends Resolve to get energy under Reshiram and Zekrom, and then charge up energy onto your benched Pokemon, uh, your benched Naganadels, and just rinse and repeat Fabled Flare Bolts, dealing 270 damage turn after turn until you've taken all of your prizes. Looks like Melvin is going to be going first and is able to find a welder off of his open poke gear opening poke gear 3.0 looking at the top seven cards of his deck and seeing if there's any supporters there and thank you so much bat sauce for the 95 bits um bat sauce says adp best deck hands down i think we do have some rcs de Agapalkia decks in the crowd tonight, and we'll have to see how they perform. Melvin doesn't have a lot going on despite finding the welder. He doesn't have any fire energy in his hand to accelerate or draw cards with. Nick Hunter playing an ultra space down and is going to get to look for an ultra beast. And we'll see if he goes for the Blacephalon or a Poiple. It looks like just from a quick glance that Nick Hunter's list is pretty similar to the list that I've been playing on stream with the Blacephalons, the Ultra Spaces, the Naganadel line, and the Reshi Rams. Very cool to see an iteration of that deck that I've been working with. And looks like Nick also starts with a dead hand. Both players just grasping at straws to find some cards to play down. And it looks like Melvin finds himself a Brixen and Charizard Tag Team GX, which is a new addition from Cosmic Eclipse to this Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team deck. But that Brixen and Charizard is not going to be helping him too much. Melvin. Going to use Ultra Space and just thin his deck by one. Getting the Naganadel GX out of his deck. And that's something I always love. It's getting to use your opponent's Ultra Space um, in your non-Ultra Beast deck. Melvin, just to be safe, going to put down uh, another Mewtwo and pass it back over to Nick. Nick finds a Cherish Ball. And with the Ultra Space, he does have an opportunity to draw some cards now. He could Ultra Space for the Naganadel GX and use Ultra Conversion. Or 
he could cherish ball potentially for a Dedenne and toss this whole hand in favor of six new cards. Looks like Nick is going to Ultra Space for that Naginate LGX. And we're probably going to see an Ultra Conversion to draw some more cards since Nick's hand is very bad. It's not getting him anywhere fast, as is Melvin's. So pretty mirrored start from both players. And Nick can evolve into that Naginate LGX and trade away one of his Lost Thunder Naginate L's finds Switch and Cherish Balls. He's got plenty of access to Pokemon GX. And I'm wondering if Nick has access to the Dedenne GX or if he's playing it. He does have a Dedenne GX. I think it's pretty fair to grab Blacephalon and Dedenne off these two Cherish Balls. Attach Fire Energy to Blacephalon GX. Switch into it and Dede change this whole hand away. This hand is that bad. He needs to ditch this hand in favor of some new cards. So we do see that combo coming down from Nick. Getting the Dedenne, getting the Blacephalon. And even though this is a Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX deck, the Blacephalon is the most efficient attacker in the deck. Having the option to go in with an early burst GX. It's an excellent strategy uh, against this Mewtwo and Mew deck. Nick is also going to want to set up some Naginate L's since the Naginate L's are just very strong against Mewtwo and Mew. Especially if Nick uses this burst GX. He could potentially then gust up and KO a regular Pokemon GX, go to three prizes, and maybe finish off a Mewtwo and Mew for weakness with Naginate Al from Lost Thunder. Looks like Nick is maybe opting for the Bursting Burn instead of the Burst GX just to disrupt Melvin a little bit. So he's going to go to 50 damage and see if he's cured of that burn he is but still the confusion pretty disruptive for melvin uh, he does have a switch in his hand i mean but no fire energy to go with that welder it looks like melvin is considering using the great catcher just to gust up a target on nick's bench and try to slow him down a little bit since he's got nothing else going on. Just a welder, a switch, another great catcher, and a big pass. Nick is going to have the opportunity to use Ultra Conversion to draw more cards. His hand is starting to get more established, and he finds a welder, which is good. So he could draw more cards. He's got the Tapu Koko Prism Star as well. He's going to welder those both onto the Blacephalon. Looks like Nick does have an energy switch and Tapu Koko Prism Star in his hand. So he does have the option to get this Naginate LGX out of the active position. He could use the Tapu Koko Prism Star to bring both lightnings out of the discard pile and then retreat. The Mewtwo does have 50 damage on it, so it only has 220 hit points left. It's going to use Pokemon Communication and looks like he's eyeing up a Naginate L from Lost Thunder, which he puts into his hand. He can evolve that Poiple on his bench, start charging up energy from the discard pile, but only two lightnings in the discard pile at this point. He uses Tapu Koko Prism Stars, Dance of the Ancients. He'll bring both of those lightning energy out of the discard pile. And not have to 
uh, not have to charge up. But I do like this play. He's going to energy switch off the Blacephalon, retreat the Naginadale, and potentially charge up that fire energy from the Naginadale, so that way he is getting kind of maximum usage out of all of his energy this turn. Fire energy coming back into play. Two lightnings coming out with the Dance of the Ancients. Now, wondering how many lightning energy does Nick run? It may only be three, it could be four. The energy switches have to come from somewhere though. And it looks like Nick gonna opt for the Bursting Burn again. I think that's an ideal play, putting the Mewtwo at 70 damage total so that it's just four Lost Zone Fire Energies away from being knocked out with a Mind Blown. And at this point, Nick is in total control. Gonna use Ultra Space, he gets to draw more cards with the Naginate LGX and that Ultra Conversion. He really just needs one more Fire Energy to Mind Blown this Mewtwo into oblivion and really put the pressure onto melvin and i did see that nick is running energy switch in his version of the list so he does have the option to energy switch these lightning energies off of the targets that they're on and onto a reshiram and zekrom tag team gx for a big 270 damage fabled flare bolts at some point. I don't believe Nick has access to a fire energy though, still dry. He finds a welder, but no fire. So it could be another awkward turn where he doesn't get to take a KO. He's gonna thin his deck though with Mysterious Treasure and play Cynthia, digging for that fire energy to attach for turn. If you can attach one fire energy from hand, we'll get to Mind Blown for 200. Now, Nick also has to be careful with his resources since he only has so many fire energy in the deck. Uh, the list that I was working with on stream has 10. Nick may run less, in which case, he would have less fire energy left in deck to finish the game with the Fabled Flare Bolts. Because these energy are not going to the discard pile, they're going to the Lost Zone. Nick does get to collect three prizes with this big Mind Blown Knockout. And Melvin, absolutely stunned at his horrible hand, still dead drawing, I can't believe it, benches resetting whole Marshadow and just has to take more abuse from this Reshiram and Zekrom deck. And Melvin has been successfully playing Mewtwo and Mew for weeks. This is just an absolute brick. I mean, he hasn't done anything devastating to the list. It's just some great catchers added in. And all of a sudden, the deck is just not drawing at all. I mean, Melvin did find those opening, the opening welder, but with no fire to be seen, it's just gonna be really tough for Melvin to get back in the game at this point. Nick has so much energy on his field. Checking his discard pile. There is no energy in that discard pile. I'm gonna Ultra Space. Check the deck. Take quick stock of how much energy is in the deck. And it looks like he does have plenty of fire energy to be able to close this game out. He's dealing 150 damage with the Mind Blown right now. Still needs a little bit more juice in the tank to one-hit KO this Mewtwo. If this was a Reshiram and Zekrom in the active at this point, it would be a knockout. But the Blacephalon is a safe lead, really. And 
you know, versus any deck that was drawing well, the Blacephalon would have been knocked out by now and cleared the way for a Reshiram and Zekron to be powered up on the bench. But Melvin finally finding that tag call and is going to have the option to get some cards out of his deck. It looks like he has a Mallow and Lana. And potentially another tag team Pokemon. He does have the Megalopunny and Jigglypuff. Thank you so much, Michael Zeely, for the 180 bits. Thanks for supporting the channel, man. Looks like Melvin really taking some time to figure out if there's any way his deck can rebound from this devastating board position. He's going to grab a Rush Ram and Charizard GX and a Mallow and Lana. He could switch the Mewtwo and Mew to the bench and promote the Marshadow just to put a non-GX threat in the active. I think I like that. And maybe just try to buy it a little bit more time. At this point, though, Melvin is in just such a bad position. No energy. He's going to switch into the Marshadow. Make Nick burn more resources before he puts another tag team Pokemon active. I think that's fair. He's considering gusting again. I don't think he necessarily needs to gust. I mean, both of Nick's targets have energy on them. That, that energy could just be charged up by Naginatel if he was to gust. Nick does find another fire energy. He's got welders in hand, so he can use that fire energy if he wants to. I'm wondering if Nick has access to another ultra conversion. He could probably trade away another ultra beast in his hand, draw three more cards. He is probably getting close to the bottom of his deck, though. It looks like Nick is going to gust up the Mewtwo, and he may have a plan cooked up. He needs five energy in play in order to take this this win. And he does not find any more fire energy, but he's at three. If he welders into one of those two fire energy or the beast energy, he will be able to take game on this Mewtwo and Mew tag team so Nick will welder one that'll bring him up to four fire and if he finds another energy to manually attach for turn he'll have game so here it goes welder for one onto the bench Naginate LGX and there's the fire energy he needs for game and he'll mind blown for 250 plus the 20 Four game, Nick Hunter taking it with his Reshri Rom deck, but we never got to even see Reshi Rom uh, take any knockouts. It was really just all Blacephalon putting in the work while Melvin's Mewtwo deck, unfortunately, not drawing the cards it needed to get out of that game uh, ahead. Uh, Nick Hunter just won his first round of the Full Grip Games League Tournament, our yep. first tournament with cards from Cosmic Eclipse. And uh, you brought Reshiram and Zekrom. Tell us a little bit about your Reshiram and, Reshiram and Zekrom deck. Yeah, so I've been kind of spending the past week or so all over the place with the deck. I had Jirachis in it at one point. I had the the four the four four two Naganadel. Right now I'm up to 444. Or, no, I'm not. I had one of the um, Ultra, not the Ultra, the Stinger GX. Okay. I tried that out, never so used four, it. So, 4, 4, 3, 1? Yeah, that's where <laughs> I was at one point. Uh -huh. I was playing, and I, every time I had one to Dene, so I'd start to Dene, and then I'd lose. <laughs> I'd sit there and stare at the board and lose. Okay. So, I was like, all right, I'll throw a second to Dene in there. So, I cut the, the Stinger GX for that. So, currently, I'm at 4, 4, 3 with the one Blacephalon. 
Cool. Um, and I really like the list. Um, there are moments where it just, like, obviously I was pretty much just playing Blacephalon with some extra lightning energies on the board. But right. um, if I, actually, if he had taken a knockout, I would have had game faster. Yes. Um, I had a Reshiram <laughs> in my hand and a lightning. All I had to do was slap that down, E-switch, and then I was good to I go. I did see that you have an energy switch in your deck. Is it just one or two? I, uh, two copies. Okay. Yeah. So, um... I've been thinking about throwing Beast Ring in there as well. I don't know where, but I, I think looking at the, the list I have to find room for Beast Ring, I have to cut you switch anyway. So for sure. I'm not seeing that really. But uh, overall, I like the deck so far. It feels really cons it feels fairly consistent, and um, it hits really, really hard. Which it is the definitely game does, for sure. It takes care of tag team Pokemon like none other. Um, we saw you have the Mew from Unbroken yes. Bonds in there. Now, what is, uh, what is that there? Um, he... Technically, can like he's more in there, less for the ability uh, against Arceus Diaga Falkia. Uh, early game, if they set one on the bench and they don't get it up in the active to get the uh, the, the GX off right away, you put one damage counter on it and then you can one shot it with. Uh, that makes off. sense. I do like that. It's mysterious treasure searchable as yep. well, so pretty neat inclusion there. Uh, is there any deck that you're worried about facing with the Reshi Rom deck? Any matchup you don't feel super comfortable with? That's actually one of the matchups that I don't really like is the Mew box. Yeah. Um, it, it, they have so many different options. They can snipe the bench, and the Mew helps with that. But, yeah, uh, yeah they have a lot of different ways they can clean up the board. I know some lists, I've seen a couple lists still playing custom catchers as well. Um, yeah. So that can that puts your Neganadels at risk because usually you just stack all the energy up on them and you're feeling good about your uh, keep energy on board to lock up game on the board but um aside from that malamar is always scary um especially with the new blacephalon so it could spread so much damage on your board if they get down to three prize if you get down to three prizes so um those are the two main matchups i'm kind of worried about aside from that like having the mew as a tech for um rcs diago palkia right that feels a lot better and overall the matchup spread seems fairly favorable for this like blacephalon again or blacephalon uh reshiram hybrid deck for sure, very cool. I was saying on stream, uh, this is the way I have Reshi Ram built too, and I think mm -hmm. uh, it it feels like the most consistent way to get Reshi Ram up and attacking mm -hmm. uh, turn after turn with the Naganadel from Lost Thunder, and I uh, I do like that uh, non GX option as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you could always just swing with Naganadels if you uh, yep. if you have to. So excellent stuff, Nick. Good luck in the rest of your rounds. Apparently Thank a you. five rounder tonight. Yes, yes. So, uh, so we've got quite a night ahead. Exactly. Well, good luck, Nick, and uh, congrats much. on your round one win. Thanks. Round two of the Full Grip Games League Tournament underway. We've got Brady Botner on the left versus Jesse Parker on the right. Brady is going to be playing Pidgeotto, everybody's favorite flying deck. Pidgeotto Stall, if you will, or Pidgeotto Control. Uh, more a control deck than a stall deck. Pidgeotto doesn't actually prevent... Your opponent from taking knockouts early on really just emphasizes controlling the opponent's hand at the end of the game and tries to deck the opponent out. Jesse has got a Reshiram and Charizard, Breakson and Charizard, Charizard and Breakson Greens deck. A Greens fire deck. I'm just guessing that there's a Charizard and Breakson in here. I don't actually... No yet, but I think that a lot of the Greens Reshizard decks are going to turn into Greens Charizard and Breaksin decks. So hopefully we get to see some Charizard and Breaksin action from Jesse's side of the field. This could be a tough matchup for Jesse, considering Brady gets to really throw a whole lot of troublesome things Jesse's way. He's going to be using crushing hammers to try and remove energy. He's going to be using Articuno GX with that cold crush GX attack to remove energy from Jesse's side of the field as well. And then eventually relying on cards like reset stamp to bring Jesse's hand down to a manageable size. Lieutenant Surge and Mars to remove cards from Jesse's hand and then top things off with Chip Chip Ice Axe <clears throat> to make sure that Jesse does not draw anything meaningful off of the top of his deck. So the early turns of this match are going to be Brady just trying to churn through his deck. 
In order for Brady to get to a point where he can bring this match under control, he needs to set up as many Pidgeys as he can so that he can rely on Pidgeotto's airmail to draw through his deck. And the strategy is to get to the bottom of the deck. And once you're at the bottom of the deck, use Orangaroo from Ultra Prism and resource management to throw valuable resources back into the deck. Valuable resources like gusting cards, like power plants, even though power plant not gonna be super useful in this matchup, uh, considering Jesse I don't think is playing any abilities in his deck. To throw supporter cards like Mars, pal pads back into the deck turn after turn so that Jesse will have a very hard time taking his final prizes. And my guess would be that Jesse is able to take the first few knockouts with ease. And then as Jesse gets to the final two or so prize cards, he's going to find himself in a very challenging situation up against the Orangaroo that we see going down onto Brady's bench. And Brady is going to play cards like Acro Bike and just try to churn through his deck since he is susceptible to knockouts every turn in the game until he gets to the bottom of his deck. Once he's at the bottom of his deck, Brady is able to control exactly which cards are in his hand every single turn since all of his resources will be in the discard pile and he's going to use resource management to put the good cards that he wants for any given situation back into his deck and then draw into them with Pidgeotto's airmail. That's the combo he's looking to achieve and the hope is that he can get to that combo as quickly as possible. Jesse on the other hand, is going to be hoping to disrupt this strategy in any way he can. Thank you so much, Grismer, for the Twitch Prime sub. Grismer and Redstorm16, both with Twitch Prime subs. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Looks like Jesse is going to use Tag Call, a new card from Cosmic Eclipse, to get that Brakeson and Charizard Tag Team GX out of the deck. Millennial subbed for 12 months. Thank you so much, Millennial 3. Millennial 3, you can go ahead and just message me on Twitch if you would like one of the busted sticker packs. I said, giving out all the 12 month subs, busted sticker packs. So, thanks so much, Millennial 3, for that sub. And thank you so much for being on board for a whole year. Jesse going to use Poke Gear, finds a Green's Exploration, and will play it. And we'll see which cards he selects out of his deck to try and get this match under control. I wonder if Jesse is going to bother putting a Charizard down into play. He may opt to just attack with the Volcanion all game, and I think that is a valid strategy against this deck. Uh, I think that Jesse putting a big target on the bench could be pretty devastating since it'll just be gusted up turn after turn where Volcanion is capable of taking all the knockouts itself so long as there is four energy in play. Uh, Volcanion's attack can deal that 120 damage necessary to knock out Orangaroo. So Jesse does not have a turn one welder, but does have turn one greens, and will set up for a welder next turn. He's gonna play the Heat Factory, draw some more cards, get a second Volcanion into play, and I do expect Jesse's board to just be Volcanians. I think that's probably where he's going to be happiest in this matchup. He's considering the Charizard and breaks in though. I think that's dangerous. And will just be a target that gets pulled up 
Um, he does go for the power heater, though. So he is going to throw some energy from the deck onto the Charizard and breaks in. And I'm sure Brady is pretty stoked to see that Charizard and... Oh, I'm sorry. Volcano only does 110. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. Yes. He is going to need to get out the Charizard and breaks in. I was thinking that Volcanion did 120. It's been a while since I've read the card. So, yes. Jesse is going to need to accelerate onto the Charizard and breaks in. And I'm showing off that Articuno GX. This is going to be a primary strategy that Brady uses uh, throughout the game. He's going to use this Articuno GX. And because of the new cards out of Cosmic Eclipse, namely the Misty and Lorelei Tag Team GX, Brady has the option to Cold Crush multiple times. So that's absolutely wild. The new Misty and Lorelei supporter gives Brady the option to totally remove all of the energy from Jesse's Pokemon twice. So not just twice, three times, four times, really, however many times he wants to. He could Cold Crush GX with the Misty and Lorelei tag team supporter. Brady is going to use Professor Elm's uh, Professor Elm to get three Pidgeotos out of the deck. Professor Elm searches out three Pokemon with 60 hit points or less, which Pidgeotto does qualify for. And start using that airmail to turn through the deck. I can't believe I forgot. Volcanion only does 110 damage. Amateur hour over here. Yes, the Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. High Heat Blast. Does 50 plus 60 more damage if you've got four fire energy in place. So Jesse is not able to just go in with the Volcanion since he is going to have to face Orangaroo eventually, which has 120 hit points. Jesse's Volcanions don't do enough damage to take down the Orangaroo. And we see Jesse trying to consider his plays here. Green's Charizard is just a relatively slow deck, which is unfortunate in this matchup. This matchup is not good for Jesse by any means. He's going to use Cynthia and Caitlyn tag team to bring the Greens out of his discard pile and then draw three cards, discarding tag call, finds a switch. And he can go in and attack with the Charizard and breaks in Tag Team GX. Does put himself at risk of potentially getting cold crushed by doing that. And the crazy thing about the Pidgeotto control deck now is that you don't just have to save your cold crush for the end of the game anymore. It used to be that... You really had to save your cold crush for that perfect moment, just the right time. Now, you can just play cold crush whenever you want. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not the highest stakes play anymore since you can use Misty and Lorelei to reuse your GX attack whenever you please. Brady letting a crushing hammer fly, tails. Another one heads. He's going to remove it from the Volcanion in the active. He's got to recycle energy on his active Orangaroo. So that energy is going to come back turn after turn. And he actually is going to opt to use the Bryson and Bella, Belba man, right? Bryson man and Belba. I don't know how to say that. Belba and Bryson man. That's it. Belba and Bryson man tag team GX. Uh, a great supporter for the middle of the game. And it requires both players to discard the top three cards of their deck. Uh, phenomenal supporter for the middle of the game because it just mills more cards out of Jesse's deck while also helping Brady to churn through his own deck. He can just get cards into the discard pile and then resource management them back into the deck so there is literally no drawback for 
Brady. Just getting to churn through his deck a little bit more. While he could mill some very meaningful cards from Jesse's deck. Every time he used the uh, Belba and Bryson man, uh, he could hit switches. He could hit Mallow and Lana's cards that help Jesse to be more mobile. Mobility is the name of the game against a control deck since control decks are always trying to bring up cards that you don't want in the active position. Every time Brady uses the Belba and Bryson man, he also has the opportunity to milk energy out of Jesse's deck. And it looks like Jesse is going to bring the Charizard and Breaks in tag team into the active, double custom catcher up a Pidgeotto, and take it out. Stacking his deck, or stacking his hand in the process. Thank you so much, Quint Perks 66 for the sub. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, Quint Perks. Jesse is going to use Charizard Breaks in 180 damage and stack his hand with three cards from the deck. Which is great. I mean, he can get cards, valuable resources into his hand. This is a very strong card out of Cosmic Eclipse. And I think we're going to see a lot of the Greens decks really love the flexibility of this card, the control factor of it. Not only um, is this a powerful attack dealing 180 damage for four energy, it also stacks your hand. So it's like getting to play a Greens Exploration or a Steven's Resolve, really. It's like playing a Steven's Resolve and dealing 180 damage. It's an absolutely wild attack. Steven's Resolve is an incredible supporter. Stacking your hand with three new cards. Charizard and Breaks in is Steven's Resolve with 180 damage attached to it. We see Brady does have the Cold Crush in his hand right now and we might see that come into play but Jesse has a huge hand and four prizes remaining. And I don't think Brady is at the bottom of his deck quite yet. And as we can see, Brady is not at the bottom of his deck yet. So he is stacking cards like Acrobike and Belba and Bryson Man onto the bottom of his deck so that he can churn through his deck more quickly. And those are the main resources he wants in his deck, just acro bikes. Because by putting more acro bikes in his deck, he allows himself a more aggressive draw. Jesse is going to use his second pair of custom catchers to bring up another Pidgeotto and take it out with Charizard and Breaks in Tag Team GX. This is Jesse's fourth custom catcher going down, so Brady doesn't have to worry about Jesse gusting again. There are only four of those. And no way. Jesse hits the Articuno GX off of the Mars. Crazy hit there. But Brady does have another turn to resource manage that Articuno back into the deck. A really wild hit off of that Mars from Jesse. Mars gets to draw two cards and then you discard a random card from your opponent's hand. I'm sure Brady is not stoked to see that Articuno hit the discard pile. Brady has got a sparse board position at this point with two Pidgeotos getting knocked out back to back. He's got his work cut out for him. Jesse has three prizes remaining, but Brady does have time on his side. 
He's got three prizes remaining, which means that Jesse can take two more knockouts before he needs to take control of this game. So, in the eyes of a control player, that's all the time in the world. Two more turns. Brady's got two more turns to reach the bottom of his deck. Two more turns until he has to cold crush the active and stamp to one. And then remove that final card from his hand. In Pidgeotto time, that is quite a bit of time. So we see Brady eyeing up his discard pile, trying to figure out which cards do I need to put back into the deck. With only one Pidgeotto, Brady is not drawing as many cards as he would like to. Every turn. And since he does have two Articunos in the discard pile, he does need to resource manage one back into the deck. And we'll see what Jesse ends up deciding to do this turn. Charizard breaks it in the active. Brady has not been able to pull up anything on Jesse's bench. I think he wants to keep the Charizard and breaks in in the active position. And Jesse going for some control cards himself. We see he played the Mars last turn. Now he's got... A Jesse and James, he's going to stamp Brady to six new cards and then make him discard two with the Jesse and James. Yo, thanks so much, Rahul, for the sub. Appreciate the support, my man. And thank you so much for supporting Tricky Jim. Rahul, everybody. Make sure to check out Rahul's stream channel, The Flea, uh, for some more awesome PTCGO content. Thanks for stopping by, Rahul. After the reset stamp, Jesse's going to go for the Jesse and James. Both players will discard two cards from their hand. Jesse has to dis or Brady discards a Jirachi. Jesse has plenty of cards that he doesn't mind discarding out of his hand. And then Jesse's going to be using the Charizard and breaks in. Um, and he's going to fail the search. Doesn't need to grab anything out of his deck. And this appears to be the turn. Brady is going for a reset stamp. Maybe. No, this is not the turn. I was going to say, no. Uh, the stamp, but maybe this will be a turn where Brady does get to remove many resources from Jesse's hand with reset stamp. He's going to use surge. Water energy goes on to the Oranguru. If Brady does find the Articuno, the Articuno can come into the active this turn since it does have the ability which allows it to move the water energy to itself. So that is a safe attachment there. And Brady does still have the Jirachi Stellar Wish and it looks like he will use his airmail, grab a card, Stellar Wish. And Brady does play this Pidgeotto deck very well. He's actually practiced it quite a bit. So I've tested this deck with him pretty extensively before the Knoxville Regional Championships. So uh, he knows what's at stake here and the cards he needs. The Charizard and Breaks in is a new quantity in this greens deck that we're not exactly used to seeing. Uh, the ability for that deck to now stack its hand every single turn allows it to constantly have resources in hand that are valuable. Brady does not have the Articuno yet. He's going in for a Pokegear. He finds the Belba and Bryson Man which could mill both players three cards. But no Cold Crush yet, and Jesse only has two prizes remaining. And with Brady only having one Pidgeotto, um, he is having a hard time reaching the bottom of his deck. He's gonna Mars, 
drawing more cards. He needs to find a Pidgey. And it looks like Jesse shuffling up. The Fire Crystal goes down. Big hit for Brady off of that Mars. Brady does find another Pidgey, meaning that he will get a little bit more draw next turn. But next turn is the turn. He needs to desperately find that Articuno GX. So Brady's going to put more resources into his deck with resource management. And he is on the clock. It's going down very quickly. He knows he's going to need to stamp, get the lock on, chip, chip, make sure Jesse's hand is bad. Um, with that Heat Factory staying in play, a single fire energy could spell disaster. But I guess Jesse is going to get to use that Charizard and Breaks in his attack to just stack his hand again. We see Brady opting for an acro bike and a reset stamp off of the resource management. He needs to desperately find that Articuno GX. Jesse's going to use Green's Exploration to get two trainer cards out of his deck and go down to one prize. And the game is nearly his. He's got a lot of resources left in his deck as well. Uh, it would be tough for Brady to mill all of these cards in 30 minutes. I mean, this is a 30-minute Swiss round game. Even if Brady is able to institute the lock here, the question remains, in a 30-minute Swiss round, can... Pidgeotto deck the opponent. It does get easier with cards like Belba and Bryson Man. I think uh, Jesse probably does need to keep up the pace of play. Hopefully Brady is uh, letting him know since it is something to consider when you're playing stall, you know, or not stall or when you're playing a control deck, you do need to be forever conscious of your opponent um, and, uh, and the clock, especially in a 30-minute round. Jesse is going to make the decision to put Power Plant into play over his own Heat Factory, and that's a big choice. I think Jesse is recognizing that he is fearing the Articuno GX, and putting the Power Plant into play makes it so that Brady is going to have an even tougher time pulling off the Articuno because he can't move that energy from his Oranguru to the Articuno now since that ability is turned off with Power Plants. Jesse's going to go into his deck, find three more cards, and with so much deck searching, uh, Jesse's hand, you know, turns are taking a pretty long time. Which is bad for the control deck. Uh, who needs all the time in the world? Brady's going to start taking his turn. I uh, finds the Articuno GX. Uh, it's possible, I guess, if he has a Faba, he could Faba the power plant. But he definitely needs to reset stamp this turn to bring Jesse's hand down to just one card. But does Brady have a way to get a water energy into his hand? He's taking a custom catcher, which makes me think that he might not have the Articuno play quite this turn. In the air mail. And he's using the Stellar Wish first to shuffle his deck. So this is a strategy we see from Pidgeotto players all the time is that they need to 
shuffle their deck to try and get the cards from the resource management into their hand. Brady uses Mars, and that's his only supporter for turn. He's desperately trying to find the reset stamp. He needs to get Jesse's hand eliminated. Jesse just stacked his hand with the Charizard and breaks in. And it looks like Brady may have to just bring up this Volcanion and try to stall it. With only one prize remaining, this is potentially a disastrous situation. Brady wondering if he can actually just go in and Stellar Wish again. He has to find that stamp or else this game is over. Brady does find the stamp. Okay, retreats into the second. Jirachi finally finds the reset stamp, brings up the Volcanion. And Jesse gets one card. But Jesse does have a huge deck left. And it's a Mallow and Lana. No way. Jesse's one card is Mallow and Lana, and that's it. Switches and takes his last prize with the Charizard and breaks in. Brady unable to get to that bottom of his deck with Pidgeotto. Well played by both players. Jesse managing his resources just perfectly to get him through that match. Charizard and breaks in, paving the way, picking out the perfect cards for Jesse's hand turn after turn. No time for an interview with Jesse Parker, unfortunately. We are moving right on to round three. We got a five round event tonight. So keeping things moving, we've got Nick Hunter on the right, who is 2-0 versus Kyle Neal, who is 1-1. Kyle got up paired to Nick Hunter, uh, but Kyle has got a very spicy deck. A lot of people in the chat wanted to see, so we're going to put him on stream. Kyle is running a Scizor GX deck featuring Island Amulet. New card from Cosmic Eclipse, which reads, The Pokemon this is attached to has 100 less hit points. Um, the Pokemon GX this is attached to has 100 less hit points. And uh, gives up one less prize when it gets knocked out, so... It effectively makes the Scizor GX have 110 hit points, and then with a rainbow energy, it can trigger the Danger Perception ability on the Scizor GX, which reads, if this Pokemon's remaining hit points is 100 or less, its attacks do 80 more damage to the opponent's active Pokemon. So for two energy, Steel Wing does theoretically 180 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks, which is pretty interesting. So we're going to see how this Scizor GX deck works out for Kyle. Nick Hunter playing the Reshiram and Zekrom deck that we saw during the first round. But it looks like Nick's opening hand might be a little bit of a bummer. Which could mean that we get to see Scizor GX win on stream, which would certainly be pretty epic. Looking forward to this match, it should most certainly be favored for Nick Hunter, who has got some Fire-type Pokemon in his deck. There is the Blacephalon GX, which is going to be hitting Scizor GX for weakness, first of all. And then there's, of course, Reshiram Zekrom, who hits 270 damage, but with Island Amulet, the Scizor GX is only going to be giving up one prize. Looks like Nick starts his Blacephalon, and it's going to be a quick pass over to Kyle. Kyle also runs Sil Valley GX in his deck, and it's going to use Professor Oak's setup on the first turn, putting a tight null onto the bench. Gets a Scyther out of the deck. Starts with a Lucario and Melmetal Tag Team GX as well. So I'm interested to see how does he use 
all of these different Pokemon we're not used to seeing in a lot of competitive decks. Lucario, Melmetal in the active. Who is he going to get off of this Professor Oak's setup? He's got Type Null, a Mew, and a Scyther. A shiny Scyther from Hidden Fates. Very cool card for sure. And of course that Hulkin, Lucario, and Melmetal in the active position he's got that nice promo one but if i were kyle i'd be pretty concerned a big fire week tag team pokemon gx in the active against a blacephalon if nick were to just find a welder and a couple of fire energies that lucario and melmetal would have just given up three prizes on the first turn of the game looks like or on the yeah second turn of the game looks like nick is going to use bursting burn to confuse the lucario and melmetal he doesn't want lucario and melmetal using full metal wall if he uses full metal wall then he makes it so that all the metal pokemon take 30 less damage from attacks during the game and if he gets to use it for two energy he could strip all of the fire energy off of the Blacephalon. Which would be pretty wild. Thanks so much, Aries the Awesome, for joining us. First time catching us live. Appreciate it. Welcome. Anybody who's here for the first time, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, make sure to drop the channel a follow. You can stay up to date on when we go live every weekday. Looks like Kyle is going to use the new red and blue tag team supporter to evolve into Scizor GX on the bench and also accelerate two metal energy from the deck to it. And evolve into Silvalli GX. Wow, Kyle's deck is setting up pretty swiftly. With Silvalli GX on board, he's going to be able to fill his hand to five cards every turn. Using that disc reload ability. And Kyle quickly putting the Island Amulet onto the Scizor GX using Cherish Ball that he has in his hand as well. Going to get a Pokemon GX out of the deck. And it looks like he's Seeking out the Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia. Now this is one heck of a spicy deck if I've ever seen one. This is wild. I don't even know how to make sense of the strategy behind it. I'm just watching in awe. Kyle is going to use Day Day Change, discard his hand, draw six new cards. His bench is full now. We'll see if he finds any resources that are going to help him get out of this tricky situation he's in in the active with that Lucario and Melmetal. He could commit an energy to it and just go for the GX attack. I hope he does. I like this spirit. Let's go. Flipping for the GX. And it's a heads. Both the energy get removed from the Blacephalon. Kyle, Neil, sacking the GX attack through confusion with his Lucario and Melmetal. What an epic turn. Nick unable to get another basic Pokemon into play. Just going to bring up the Dedenne GX and use his own GX attack, discarding a prize. It's a welder. And tossing his hand in frustration. Kyle has the switch going in with Scizor. GX. And Kyle does have the rainbow. So he's going to swing for 180 damage. And that's game. 
Scizor GX can steal wing for 180 because of the danger perception. I don't know why the players are playing anymore. This is it. Kyle just wants to live it up. Is it 160? Isn't it 180? It's only 160. Oh, he wasted his jet. I'm thinking, I'm looking at Steel Wing. Doesn't he have Danger Perception turned on? Oh, it's 80 more damage. Oh, never mind. It's 160. I read the 100 and I was like, Danger Perception makes him do 100 more. Isn't that busted? I can only see the 100 part. I didn't see the 80 part. I got it, chat. All right. It's 160. Danger Perception's not that good. It just adds 80 more damage. Yeah, me and you both, Bat Sauce. I saw you. I was like, man. Busted ability. So Kyle is going to deal 160 damage with Steel Wing. Nearly taking the game, but that Placephalon GX is going to hang on by just 20 hit points. And just in time, Nick does find himself a Cherish Ball. <clears throat> He's going to be able to draw out of this situation with a Dedenne GX. But is it too little too late? His deck is very favored against this metal deck. But his setup has left a lot to be desired. Here he goes, benching Poiple. He's got a Cynthia in his hand. Cherish Ball, Mysterious Treasure. Probably going to search out a Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX. Get that thing onto the bench. Start attaching energy to it. And probably just use Bursting Burn on the active, if I had to guess. Cherish Ball coming down. Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX coming out of the deck. And I expect that we're probably going to see a Cynthia from Nick this turn. Fire Energy going on to the Reshiram. And it looks like Nick is going to wait with this hand. He used Day Day Change. I think he could have drawn with that Cynthia, I think, that's in his hand to see even more cards. I don't see why not. The Scizor GX now confused, thanks to the Blacephalon GX and that Bursting Burn attack. We'll see what Nick opts to do next turn. He's still not taking any big knockouts next turn. The Rush Ram and Zekrom need some turns to power up. And it looks like Kyle playing a Cynthia. He's going to refresh his own hand. So he's used one switch already. He does have the Silvalli GX to help draw some more cards. After the Cynthia, how many switches could Kyle possibly play though? I'm assuming two, maybe three. I would be surprised if it was more than three. But sure enough, there's the switch right there. Off of the six, so. Kyle can take the knockout, switch into a new attacker. He could actually take the knockout with Mew from Unbroken Bonds. And sure enough, we see the Mew getting that rainbow energy. And Kyle is going to be retreating the scissor saving a switch that's smart i didn't realize the scissor was so nimble a single retreat cost it seems like scissor would have a little bit of a heavier retreat cost but one it is okay and kyle is going to use the mu from unbroken bonds to take a knockout on the placephalon gx And place 10 more damage on another Pokemon. Kyle's going to find another Scyther out of his deck. 
and take out the only fire Pokemon in Nick Hunter's deck. Nick on interview said that there's only one Blacephalon in the deck, and that Blacephalon only took one prize. So with Nick's early dead draw, Kyle is able to trade favorably with this Blacephalon GX. Reshiram and Zekrom. Looks like it's going to be leading the way, making its way into the active position. Nick going to Mysterious Treasure and then play Cynthia. He's going to discard the Mew from Unbroken Bonds. I don't think he needs that card. And we'll probably get a Naganadel out of his deck. And it looks like he's favoring the Naganadel GX. I do think that a Naganadel from Lost Thunder would be good at this point. I think he needs to start charging up those energy from the discard pile into play so that he can take some big knockouts with this Reshiram and Zekrom in the upcoming turns. He's actually got a huge gift this turn with there only being a Mew in the active position. If Nick is just able to find a lightning energy or an energy switch and a fire energy, he could charge up a lightning energy from the bench, energy switch it to the active, and then attach a fire energy from hand, something like that, to pull off this knockout. But he needs to have this Naganadel in order to safely take a knockout this turn. Put himself in a situation where there's really only a couple cards that he needs to hit. An energy switch in a fire or a lightning will get him the knockout this turn on this Mew. Bring him to four prizes remaining. But Kyle's board is definitely pretty built up. It's not doing bad right now. I would be a little bit concerned if I was Kyle, though. Because it seems like it should be pretty challenging to power up these attackers turn after turn. And they don't exactly do a ton of damage. Nick was able to find the energy switch and an energy. Attaches the fire, brings the lightning back. He realizes that he has the play. He's going to energy switch the lightning to his Reshiram. Unfortunately, no other Poiples this turn. We see a Pokemon communication in his hand, but he's unable to use it. And we get the Fabled Flare Bolts for 90 damage. Scizor making its way back out into the active position. It is some real Scizor hours right now. This is astounding. AAB22 gifting 10 subs to the community. Let's get it rocking for AAB22 in the chat. Thank you so much, AAB22, for the generosity and getting this party rocking tonight. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, for supporting the shop. AAB22, always uh, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Let's get some whoops in the chat, everybody. And welcome all new subs to the channel. Peter, Winter Soldier, Graysloth, Starmie, Helmsy, Willy Aza, MCU Collector, Doc Mike, Muji, Agent Silver. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you so much, AAB, again, for the amazing generosity. Hopefully you guys enjoy this song as much as I do. Looks like Kyle Neal is going to get a Chaotic Swell into play. And yes, everybody who is uh, being gifted a sub, you have access to the sub-only Discord, where I do keep my deck lists for all the decks that I am working on, uh, especially these new Cosmic Eclipse lists. Uh, Natalie does an incredible job moderating 
the Discord and hooking us up uh, with all of the beautifully laid out deck lists in the Discord. If you haven't seen it, it really is a phenomenal job that she does organizing all of that. And I do post uh, all the deck lists that I'm working on as well as some testing and tournament results. And the Scizor GX is going to swing into that Reshi Ram for 160 damage. Not 160, just. Is it 160? No. Yes. Yes, 160. Very good. Yes. And then the ball is back in Nick's court. With the Island Amulet, the Scizor doesn't have a ton of hit points left. I mean. It's technically getting like minus 130 right now. It's only got 80 HP left. It is taking 30 less damage from attacks. Nick does have access to his Tapu Koko Prism Star now, though. So he's going to be able to juice his board with some more lightning energy from the discard pile. And we'll have no problem taking this knockout. He doesn't really need all too much energy, though. He really only needs to do, I mean, 180 damage will definitely do it. 90 doesn't quite get there because of the minus 30 effect. He's going to attach a lightning to the Naginate L and Cynthia, see some more cards. Hopefully get some more Poiple set up. And I'm wondering... Is Kyle going to be able to stream another Scizor after this? And it looks like Kyle may be able to. He's got the Scyther on his bench with a rainbow on it. Which could easily turn into a Scizor next turn. We see some Welders in Nick's hand. He's got a Pokemon Communication too. Um, if that's a Pokemon on the far left of his hand, which I think it is, a Reshiram and Zekrom, he could trade the Reshiram into the deck and get another Poiple out of the deck. I think that that would be a pretty smart thing to do for Nick. I think he needs to get another Poiple into play. But Nick is only taking one prize on this Scizor GX, which is pretty wild. The Island Amulet's going to be putting in a lot of work and really controlling the rate at which Nick is able to take these prizes. But with that really juicy Lucario and Melmetal on the bench, Nick could theoretically just take out this Scizor GX in the active and then use Great Catcher to bring up the Lucario and Melmetal on the bench and finish off the game with that three prizes. Both players sitting at four prizes now. It is a close game. Kyle not going to be able to win by taking this knockout. Needs to take one more prize afterward. Reshram and Zekrom giving up three prizes. We're going to see that Naginate L use Charge Up, bringing a fire energy to itself from the discard pile. And Nick's going to take... Some stock of Kyle's resources. See what he's got in the discard. And then Nick going to preserve the Tapu Koko Prism Star and take one prize on the Scizor GX because of the Island Amulet. Kyle, considering how to craft his strategy forward, promotes the Scyther with the Rainbow. Are we going to be seeing another Scizor GX? come into play. He's got the Silvalli GX on his bench. He can refill his hand with Silvalli and that disc reload ability. Kyle's got great catcher in his hand too, but I know that Kyle would love to knock out the active 4-3 prizes, but the great catcher is going to allow Oh, it looks like he's not playing Great Catcher. He's playing Red and Blue. All right. Red and Blue coming to the rescue, finding that Scizor GX 
out of the deck and evolving the Scyther. And the combination of red and blue with disc reload is proven to be very strong because the weakest part about using red and blue is that you don't get to see any new cards when you play it. Kyle has the Island Amulet as well and the rainbow so he's got the wombo combo swinging for 160 damage with steel wing and reshi rom hitting the discard pile nick has got to be floored and kyle only has one prize remaining can kyle find a way out of this He's got a mysterious treasure. He's weldered already. He does have an energy switch in his hand too. He's gonna use mysterious treasure, discard his Lysander Labs. He needs a Reshi Rom. Which I believe there is one in his deck. Unless he discarded it some reason it is there in his deck i see it i think that the naganadel feels like a better promotion here um the naganadel from lost thunder i don't see why not but i guess it doesn't really matter nick's gonna find the naganadel gx actually and if Kyle's just able to find a great catcher, he's got game on that to Denny GX, so that is a little bit troublesome. Nick's going to use Ultra Conversion, draw three cards, finds Reshiram and Zekrom. I think he's still an energy short because of the retreats. He's got the Reshiram and Zekrom and the fire energy, but no way to get it into the active position unless he energy switches or attaches energy. He needed one more... energy attachment let's see what he's got here he's got the tapu coco prism star i think he can attack actually attach for turn yeah energy switch up to the naginate lgx and then charge up on the naginate l and nick has got himself a substantial attack this turn pretty good he's got all the pieces that he needs he still has not used charge up yet He's got the charge up onto his Lost Thunder Naganadel. He weldered. He used the Tapu Koko. And he could turning point, but I don't think that that's going to be what we see. We're going to see a fabled Flare Bolt. Because if he turning points, uh, yeah, loses the game. So we use fabled Flare Bolts for 180. Taking the knockout, 150 technically, because of the fact that Scizor was taking 30 less damage. Well, I guess it's also times... Oh, it's not times two. I always forget Reshi Rom, not actually a fire Pokemon. Attacking with fire energy, not a fire Pokemon. So Kyle really up against the wall. Can Kyle find a way out? Multiple Scizor GX have been knocked out at this point. All he's got is Lucario and Melmetal in the active position. Who does have a lot of hit points. And Lucario Melmetal has actually used that GX attack, so I did forget. Uh, his Pokemon are taking 30 less damage as well. So the Scizors are actually taking 60 less damage when they get hit. And this Lucario Mel Metal has got a metal frying pan on it. So the Lucario Mel Metal is going to be tanking for sure. But Nick can deal consistent damage to it just by using the Naganadel from Lost Thunder on the bench. Charging up every turn. And just swinging. 
Nick could steal Fist for 50? Which feels kind of bad. Um, he does get to accelerate a metal energy. And it looks like Kyle is going to ditch his own chaotic swell with Mount Cornet. Probably wishing that he could have had the Mount Cornet in play this turn. And looks like Kyle is using a Pokegear 3.0. Looking for a supporter card. Doesn't find one. He's got two Sil Valley GX in play at this point. Can disc reload multiple times. He's going to use disc reload one. And I'm not exactly sure what outs Kyle has in his deck get himself out of this. Multiple Scizor GX have been knocked out. All Nick needs is a charge up, an attachment from hand to the bench, and a great catcher, and he can bring up the Dedenny GX on Kyle's bench for game. This game is very close being concluded and Kyle is going to Dedene, choosing to Dede change away these cards in his hand and dig a little bit deeper in his deck. I think he's very close to the bottom of his deck at this point. I can't tell how many cards left. Nick spreads them out. There are only a couple cards left in his deck and Nick is going to get his hand reset stamped by Kyle. Reset stamped to just two. And Kyle with only one prize left. Looks like he's going to have Tough time scooping up that final prize. Three energy on the active Lucario and Melmetal. Only a couple cards left in Kyle's deck. And what can he do? I think we're going to see a Steel Fist. He's already attached for turn. Heavy Impact is not going to be an option, unfortunately. Steel Fist for 50. Nick gets three cards. He finds an Ultra Space, uh, which he can use to draw cards. Very valuable for him. And the fact that Kyle sacked his own Chaotic Swell means that Nick is going to get some mileage out of his stadium, which is very valuable for him, drawing him some much-needed cards out of this reset stamp. Nick is going to use Ultra Conversion, draw three cards, finds a Cynthia and a Dedenny. Nick has got a Mysterious Treasure that he's going to look to play. And just eyeing up his deck, saying, what actually do I have left? Uh, he's got a Welder and some Fires. And the Lucario Melmodel is not actually going to go down, though. It's taking... 60 less damage, so if Nick does use Fabled Flare Bolts for 270, it's only doing 210 because of the frying pan and the fact that Kyle has used Full Metal Wall GX. So Nick does have to tread carefully, making sure that he doesn't deck himself out. He's only got what appears to be, oh no, two cards left. He decks himself out. No, don't do this. Oh, the great catcher. Okay, there we go. And that's game. I was going to say, <laughs> I didn't see the great catcher. So I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, and Kyle frustratingly revealing that his final prize was the great catcher, Nick Hunter, taking the game with his Reshiram and Zekrom deck after a devastatingly slow start. Kyle almost clutching victory.
with his very creative scissor deck but nick hunter emerging victorious an exciting round three we got round four of the full grip games league tournament coming at you with kendall polish on the left versus matt price on the right matt price is playing charizard and breaks in with the greens engine volcanian and one reshiram and charizard tag team gx in the deck kendall is playing what i believe is a baby placephalon deck so it should be pretty exciting to watch these two fire decks duke it out can the big tag team pokemon behind the greens deck take victory or will the baby placephalon deck be able to stabilize and take a couple of knockouts really all it needs to be able to win i mean there are a ton of tag team targets for this baby placephalon deck to be able to capitalize on i'm sure matt is going to be looking to rely heavily on reset stamp to try to manipulate kendall's hand keep it at a small and manageable size and yes for the people in the chat asking that is a grizzly bear gx marker that is a magic the gathering card i believe some sort of bear card and matt price loves bears that is one of the defining characteristics of matt price also for those of you uh who were familiar with the Valplume and alolan executor deck that me and the team brought to the richmond virginia regional championships matt price was the uh, creator of that deck he was the one who inspired us all to play it the one who really brainstormed the original concept of the deck and whose idea i took and ran with to uh, make some final adjustments and changes before taking it to the regional stage but matt was so confident in his deck that he was uh willing to bet our tournament registration that we would make day two with it if we played it that is how confident it was and he was 100 percent correct all four of us that played it we all day two with it so these guys are getting started now and we'll see who is going to be playing first i think playing first pretty advantageous for kendall he would love a couple of turns to get established before matt starts to attack and it looks like there might be some hold up with uh matt yes matt does look very ready I'm imagining spongebob chanting i'm ready yes all right very good and kendall's on the draw matt starting charizard and breaks in tag team gx in the active kendall getting a jirachi start himself he's got welder in his hand and deciding between a pokemon and a fire energy doesn't want to discard the fire energy looks like since he has a welder and a fire in his hand but uh i think he probably has to keep that pokemon if i had to guess since i'm not sure that there are a ton of other pokemon in that hand uh now the glare is hitting i can't figure out what that is is that blocephalon is that some artwork for blocephalon that i'm not familiar with what is that anybody in the chat help me out what card is that that has got to be a new card i have not seen it but i have no idea what that is someone in the chat please advise what am i looking at on kendall's bench is that a volcanian i guess that is a volcanian is that volcanian from unbroken bonds i was not expecting to see that <laughs> i was i was like looking at it like it was gonna be blocephalon that's Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. I got it, chat. I got it. Context is everything, right? Without context, I could not tell what that was. I was like, this must be a new card. What is it? Nah, it's Volcanion. That's just Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. Um, and for some reason, I guess I'm getting it old because I couldn't see what it was. <laughs> So, that is a Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds. And he's playing in his Baby Blacephalon deck. So, he's going to be able to use that Volcanion to Flare Starter. 
accelerate energy onto his benched Pokemon. And maybe dish out some damage as well. Can attack. Yeah. Here come the boomer jokes. Yes, I know. I right, man, I need to get my prescription updated. What the heck? Matt, it's gonna kick things off with the Greens Exploration. And we'll probably be trying to get either a switch to get a Volcanion in the active himself. Or maybe just prep with some welder shenanigans for next turn. But the toughest part about the Greens Charizard decks is finding those Volcanions. They do not actually play Pokemon Communication. Since they play so few Pokemon, there's no reason to play Pokemon Communication. Fortunately, Matt does have a Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds himself. See, without the context, I can't really tell what that Volcanion is, but since it's next to a Charizard, I know that that's Volcanion, right? In Kendall's deck, I'm looking at that thing like, what's that? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So Matt's going to get his Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds in the active position and go for a turn one flare starter. Since he's going second, he is going to be able to accelerate three energy from the deck and slap those onto his Charizard and breaks in Tag Team GX. And there's one takeaway from this event tonight. It's that I've been very impressed by the Charizard and breaks in Tag Team GX. I mean, in a lot of situations, Charizard and breaks in is just superior to Reshiram and Charizard. Charizard and breaks in's bl brilliant flare attack just allows you to keep the pressure on turn after turn after turn also against Pidgeotto Crimson Flame Pillar is insane um, absolutely nuts against that deck it basically gives Green's Charizard decks a, an option to full voltage GX or Nitro Tank bring energy back from the discard pile and rebound after a cold crush it's a phenomenal trait of this card and I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of Charizard and Breaks in, in these greens decks, particularly going forward. Phenomenal card. And uh, very cool to see the ways that it is getting played here at the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Kendall, going to take a look at this Stellar Wish and see what he wants to grab. He's got a Switch and an Ultra Space. Both of them seem pretty good. He's going to look for the switch. And Kendall's going to use Poke Gear as well, looking for a welder to potentially get some energy into play. Finds a ton of fire and a Cynthia. And it looks like he's just going to fail that. Not interested in shuffling his hand back into the deck. Um, I think maybe the Cynthia is worth grabbing just to have as an option um, in the future turns. And also it thins the deck. I mean, Kendall has got three Poke Gears in his hand right now. He's going to let another one fly. You definitely just take the Cynthia out of the deck just to thin it out of the deck so that you don't keep finding it off of your Poke Gears. Thank you so much, Zach Prof, for gifting a sub to the community and welcome Novocaine69 to the club. Thank you so much, Zach, for the generosity and the gift. All right, Kendall Poke Gearing again, failing the Poke Gear. And he's got a third one in his hand, so we're going to let that one fly as well. Still on the hunt for a welder. And Kendall find it this time around. And the answer is no. Wow. Three Pokegears. No welder. 
That is a tough break for Kendall. It was sitting here chilling. Now, there's a couple things Kendall could have done to thin his deck and really given those Poke Gears a little bit more mileage. He could have used the the Fiery Flint to bring Fire Energies out of the deck before he did those. Um, he's going to discard the Switch and get two Fire Energy out of the deck with the Giant Hearth. Uh, I think I really would have liked to see Kendall really bring the Fire Energy out of his deck first. Uh, before he went for the three Poke Gears, and now he whiffed all three Poke Gears, which could leave him in a very bad spot. And Kendall also didn't bring the Cynthia out of his deck with the first Poke Gear, which is definitely something that he should have done uh, to just thin his deck more and give himself some more options going forward. So. Kendall does have an attachment for turn. It looks like he's going to throw an energy onto a Blacephalon. It may end up just having to pass. I think that might be a Cynthia on the far left side of his hand. I can't tell. It is. And he's going to play the Cynthia to shuffle up and see six new cards. Still on the hunt for a Welder. I mean, at this point, I think Kendall's matchup against this Charizard deck is pretty favorable if he can just get his deck established at all. He'll, he should be in a pretty reasonable spot. We see Matt giving the deck a little shuffle there. Kendall does find an escape board. And Kendall may just go in and use the Volcanion to Flare Starter and bring some energy onto that Baby Blacephalon. I think that's what we're going to see here with the Volcanion coming into the active position. Flare Starter just going to get one energy onto Blacephalon. That's really all he needs, and that way the Blacephalon will be pretty close to attacking next turn. Unlike Jesse Parker's version of the Green's Charizard deck that we saw on stream earlier, uh, Matt, I know for a fact, is not playing Custom Catcher. So Matt is relying on Great Catcher. To bring up Pokemon GX from the bench. But since Kendall probably doesn't run any Pokemon GX, those Great Catchers are not going to see a ton of action on Matt's side of the field, and Matt is just going to have to just attack whatever's in the active position turn after turn. Shouldn't be a big problem because Matt does have the option to just KO whatever is in front of him every turn pretty easily as well. Matt's eyeing up his situation. I mean, he does have to be concerned with the Blacephalon on the bench and two energy attached to it now. Matt is in danger of getting his Charizard and Brakeson knocked out next turn. So Matt probably going to be a little bit hesitant to bring this Charizard and breaks in up into the active position because if he brings the Charizard and breaks in into the active position and takes the knockout then he could just lose the game he's using green's exploration now searching his deck for two trainer cards to bring it two trainer cards and he could grab a switch if he gets switch he can Put the Charizard in the active. And it looks like he might decide to build up another attacker first. So I think I like this strategy from Matt. Kendall only has one Baby Blacephalon built up at this point. And it's going to be a lot harder for Kendall to get the Blacephalon into the active position and gust out the Charizard and breaks in and knock it out. But it looks like Matt actually might B 
be tossing the welder strategy. I saw Matt originally looking for tag call welder, and I was like, I like this. Matt is going to go for a new Pokemon, but it looks like no. Instead, he's getting switch tag call. Okay. So maybe giving himself another Pokemon with tag call just in case. I think I do like that. He's getting the Reshiram and Charizard tag team. But it looks like he's going to power plant and probably go in with his Charizard and breaks in. And the cool thing about attacking with Charizard and breaks in here is that he does get to stack his hand. This brilliant flare attack is incredible. And thank you so much. Uh, people in the chat talking about the benefits of being a tricky gym sub. Yes. Primary benefits. Food tastes better, <laughs> apparently. I lost 10 pounds being a tricky gym sub. All right, Matt is going to take the knockout, stack three cards into his hand from his deck. And Kendall will promote a Jirachi. Kendall really uh, could go off this turn if he's able to get six fire energy into his hand as well as one fire energy onto the Blacephalon. So we'll see what Kendall's able to pull this turn. Matt taking a prize. Does Kendall have the resources? He's got three fire in hand right now. He's going to go for the Stellar Wish. If he finds a Fiery Flint, this thing's a goner. He does not. Really unfortunate having to just go for the Stellar Wish there. I mean, you kind of have to go for it. None of these cards are helpful. For Kendall's cause right now. He's just going to end up using Cynthia to draw six new cards. He'll take the B-String. B-String is not activated yet. So I think Kendall's line of play is just to attach a fire energy onto this baby Blacephalon and Cynthia and hope to literally hit like six fire energies off of this Cynthia. There's not a lot of, a lot of other routes to take. So he is going to use that Cynthia, and now having used the Stellar Wish on that Jirachi already, he's in a much worse spot. He needs to find... I don't even know if there's a hand that can get him there. It would have to have two Fiery Flints in it. But then he... Yeah, it would, it would literally have to have like two Fiery Flints or a Fiery Flint, some Fire Energies, and a Fire Crystal. Oh, well, hey... Okay, there's a Fiery Flint right there. And no other cards that he needs. So tough. He can get four Fire Energy into his hand, but he cannot um, take a knockout. Uh, he has to play this Ultra Space and go get himself another Blacephalon 100%. That is non-negotiable. So he does need that. And I think Kendall just chills this turn. Just relax. Matt does not play Custom Catchers. Now, Kendall doesn't know this. But if, if Kendall just leaves his three energy Blacephalon safe on the bench until it's ready to take a knockout, there's almost no way he loses this game. So Kendall just needs to retreat into the Blacephalon with no energy on it and pass. That would be the best play. And Kendall sees it. Great call from Kendall. I like this line of play a lot. Just pass. Wait for Matt to aggress further. Matt's deck has a lot of healing in it. Kendall just needs to wait until he gets enough fire energy in his hand to take a knockout on the Charizard and breaks in. And now Matt has got to be a little bit concerned that Kendall has this three energy 
Blacephalon on the bench that he can't deal with. I would certainly be uh, a little concerned. I think if I'm Matt, I put some energy onto that Volcanion and try to attack with the Volcanion. Buy some time, you know, try to take some prize. Make Kendall knock out the Volcanion, I think. Or something like that. Matt also needs to build up another attacker. Now, off of the Charizard and breaks him. He probably got himself all the welders and stuff that he needs to build up another attacker next turn. So we do see him looking at some other stuff. He's considering a hard retreat. Now, Matt did opt tonight for a tankier version of uh, Ram Charizard. He's got a lot of heal cards in this. It was teched more for Malamar. Um, it's got Fabas in the deck and four great potions as well as some Mallow and Lanas. So Matt does have a lot, a lot, a lot of healing in the deck, but at the cost of the custom catchers. Instead, he is playing a couple of great catchers so he doesn't have the option to target down those non-GXs on Kendall's bench. You can't have everything in your deck, and Matt was anticipating more Malamar tonight. And Matt swinging in with the Volcanion for 110 damage. Ball back in Kendall's court. Will Kendall take a knockout on this Volcanion? I think that's probably exactly what Matt wants. Now, how does Kendall respond to this Volcanion? I think Matt would be pretty stoked to see that three energy Blacephalon make its way into the active position so that he can knock it out and take it out of the equation. I know that this is what he's most worried about right now. If he does, he'll go down to four prizes remaining, which does unlock Kendall's Beast Ring turn. And we see Kendall really thinking through this fiery flint. He's going to get some fire energies. From the deck into his hand, looks like he's discarding um, a skateboard. And another card. We'll get four fires out of the deck. And he does have the switch in his hand, so we could just switch into Jirachi, get a Stellar Wish going as well. Which is good. More resources out of the deck. And I think we probably are going to see. Kendall take this knockout this turn. Kendall goes into the Jirachi. We're going to see a Stellar Wish. And Kendall finds Fire Crystal and another Fiery Flint. Both excellent choices. We'll really get him some good fire recovery for the next turn, and it's really important that Kendall just keep this Jirachi alive. It's really the only thing keeping his deck moving and finding pieces at this point. It looks like Kendall probably going to drop a fire energy onto the other baby Blacephalon he has in play. I think that would be a fine maneuver there. He doesn't have the Welder for next turn, though. So when this Baby Blacephalon gets knocked out, Kendall has a lot of chips on him finding Welder off of this Jirachi. And I think that might have been a Welder off the prizes, which would make sense. It is a Welder off the prizes. Fantastic hit there for Kendall. And it makes sense that he would have some welders prized. We saw him whiff three Poke Gears at the beginning of the game looking for an early welder. Matt's going to use Poke Gear himself. Does not find a supporter card and will fail it. He's got Charizard and Breaks in, in the active now, ready to take down this Baby Blacephalon with all the energy. 
Kendall's got a welder in his hand. It's a weird time for Matt to reset stamp if he does feel like he needs to stamp. He knows Kendall does have energy in his hand, which is some information. Um, looks like he's going to be using Cynthia and Caitlin to get a greens out of his discard pile and draw three cards. I think it's a fine time to use the Cynthia and Caitlin since he doesn't really need anything this turn. He's got everything that he could possibly want in his hand. He's just dying up his discard pile. Make sure he's taking stock of all of his options. And assuming we're going to see big, brilliant flare for 180 damage. But will Matt opt to reset stamp Kendall this turn? It would only be a stamp to five. Matt only has, I think, two or three reset stamp in his list. And Matt definitely wants to reset stamp after this Charizard and Brixen goes down. Now, Matt is very low on energy on board. If this Charizard and Brixen goes down and Matt doesn't have a response, he could just get run over, which would be very stressful. So I think he needs to start building up another attacker to have at the ready. But we'll see. I think Rush Ram Charizard needs to hit the bench. I mean, there's really no there's no reason to hesitate putting it down. Looks like Matt is going to actually take this turn to GX. That's a very interesting choice for Matt. And I think he's going to get punished for this. Big time. Oh, but he is burned. Okay, that's like a little bit of an interesting play. I forgot. He's confused. Yes. The defending Pokemon gets burned and confused. And he didn't have the energy in hand to Brilliant Flare. Okay. So this all of a sudden makes a lot more sense. Matt was actually out of energy in hand. Weirdly. Because, I mean, he could Brilliant Flare for like whatever cards he wants. And just got a little energy dry there. So he was not able to actually use Brilliant Flare. Thank you, Riley, for pointing that out. I assumed he just had access to everything he wants because he's using Brilliant Flare every turn, but he was an energy short of announcing his attack. I assume that's why he was going for the Cynthia and Caitlyn, trying to draw into a fire energy off of the Cynthia and Caitlyn. He didn't find a fire energy the turn previous off the Cynthia and Caitlyn. Now, Kendall... Going into his deck with the Fiery Flint. This is going to be a big flip if he decides to flip for this Fireball Circus. And we've seen uh, a flip already today on stream. A flip for Confusion. Kyle Neal used his GX attack through a Bursting Burn Confusion earlier and in an exciting match against Reshiram. Will Kendall... Flip for his Fireball Circus. He's got one, two, three, four, five energy in hand right now, but he's actually going to welder onto the benched. Blacephalon finds double switch. Wow. Uh, I think he could just switch into Jirachi. See if he finds himself a Fire Crystal and take the knockout. If he finds Fire Crystal off of this Stellar Wish, Matt would be in a pretty devastating spot, I think. But I think Matt also loading up these Volcanians. Wow. Kendall does not find the Fire Crystal. Instead, finds... Giant Hearth and Beast Ring. Ops for the Beast Ring. I think I like the Giant Hearth grab a little bit better. He's got multiple Beast Rings in hand. And it's really weird. It's like he doesn't want to bring up any of these Blacephalons with all this energy on them. 
I think we might just see Kendall swing for 150. Which hurts. I mean, he had so much energy in his hand. But Cephalon swinging for 150 damage. I think at this point, Matt is cool. I mean, he's got all the heal cards in the world. He definitely has three great potions in this hand. He's just going to go boom, 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 heal that all off. And start swinging with these baby Vulcanians because, yeah, it's game time, fellas. This is what Matt has been waiting for was an opportunity to heal his big boy and take some prizes with the little Vulcanians. Matt cannot use greens because he used Mallow and Lana. So put that back in your <laughs> in your deck, Matt. Uh, the greens comes back to the hand. Very good. Judge Natalie is on the case. And now he does need to shuffle his deck, I believe, because he saw the cards in the order they were in. So we're probably going to have Matt shuffle his deck uh, it is a uh, casual tournament, so we're not going to institute uh, so we are going to just, you know, probably do warning. Natalie's going to shuffle up Matt's deck a little bit since he did see the order of the cards. And Matt will just take the knockouts with Volcanion High Heat Blast dealing 110 damage. Not a warning, but like a, hey, you know, just uh, just say, hey, you can't do that. Not actually a warning, you know, a, you feel me, chat? Just like a, you know, a verbal, like, hey, man, no, no double supporter. Not actually a written warning, right? Yes, very casual event. Especially with the new tag team supporters you know a lot of them uh you know mallow and lana is a switch right so didn't feel like uh a draw supporter really and it looks like kendall's just gonna pass with the baby blacephalon active matt is definitely in the driver's seat now living through that turn with the charizard and breaks an active he's got multiple Pokemon that he can take knockouts on with the Volcanians. And he's just going to continue putting on pressure with a high heat blast, 110 damage, turn after turn. All three Pokemon on Kendall's board can be knocked out with Volcanion. And it looks like Matt is going to get a Faba into his hand with that greens and the Faba. Be very powerful for stopping this Jirachi escape board shenanigans, which is something that he wants to do desperately because the Jirachi is clearly the lifeblood of this Baby Blacephalon deck. So we see Matt trying to take care of that in any way he can. Kendall going to use Acrobike, discarding an escape board. He's got a Beast Energy, which he's going to put onto his Baby Blacephalon and give it a little bit of boost and damage, but his hand is bad. So he's going to send up that Baby Blacephalon again and pass. Matt has got the Faba for the escape board, and it looks like these players are in time, actually. So I don't know if Matt is going to be able to win. He's turned one of time. I think this game is going to go to a tie both players just taking too long to execute their game strategy and since i believe matt has three prizes left to take um kendall cannot take enough prizes in his remaining turns i'm assuming that they are in time by the way that matt is flipping the dice yes it looks like they are in time And Matt is just going to pass. Realizing that Matt cannot win, he's realized that the match is a tie and that it is a tie. So unfortunately there, ran out of time. Matt clearly having the advantage in that game, but the match not concluding. 
Um, Kendall never able, able to get that big knockout that he needed on the tag team Pokemon when he needed it. And Matt's unable to get all of the prizes taken. So round four resulting in a draw. We've got one more round up ahead. Round five coming at you in just a moment here from Full Grip Games. We'll be right back. And it is time for the fifth and final round. Full Grip Games League Tournament. We've got Dana Woods on the left versus Jesse Parker on the right. Dana Woods playing his own unique version of Arceus, Dauga, and Palkia. I think he is playing some uh, Quagsires in the list, as well as some other water attackers from what I saw. Jesse is going to be playing Charizard and Brakeson. Tag Team GX with the Greens engine. Greens, Charizard, probably both versions of Charizard in the deck. So Dana does have the type advantage here with multiple Quagsire in the deck as well as an Arceus, Dauga, and Palkia. I think it is probably a little bit more similar to traditional Quagsire decks, uh, traditional Nagquag decks, than maybe... A New Age ADP deck from what I saw before the tournament. So Dana probably going to be leaning on Quagsire to try and get some big Hydro Pump attacks announced. I do see an RCS Dialgapalkia proxy in his hand, it looks like. And if Dana can get his board position established... He should be very favored in this match. Now, we did see that Jesse is playing custom catchers. Jesse could attack Dana's board position by taking out key components like Quagsire, Whoopers, Poiples, things like that. We see that. Dana does have an Arceus Dalgapalkia in the active position. No fear on this man. I mean, he is playing against a Greens deck. So this could be a little bit of a slow start from Jesse. Jesse isn't going to be getting the turn to Reshizard attack for 300 damage. Greens Charizard does not do it. So Dana does have a couple turns to establish his board and get cooking. I think the most stressful thing for Dana would be if Jesse goes in and gets a turn two flare um, high heat blast on his Arceus Dalgapalkia, hit it for 110, and then finish it off with a Charizard and breaks in the following turn. I mean, he would need a lot of gas to get that going, for sure. So I think the quickest Jesse could knock out the Arceus Dalgapalkia would be on turn three. Dana's deck is not built to get the turn one altered creation. This is a more slow-burning Nagquag featuring Arceus Dialgapalkia. So, Jesse's got a turn one, Cynthia and Caitlin. And thank you so much, Trainer Chip, with the host and 26 viewers. Welcome, welcome, everybody from Trainer Chip's channel. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We got our fifth and final round of the Full Grip League Tournament. Nag Quag featuring Arceus Diagopalki on the left versus Green's Charizard on the right. And with Jesse going for the Cynthia and Caitlyn, not the strongest turn one supporter from him. Um, he's just going to draw three cards and pass. Dana now has got to be pretty excited about that slow start from Jesse because time is going to be Dana's friend. If Dana has time to set up. He is going to be able to overwhelm Jesse's Waterweak Pokemon very quickly. 
we see is starting off with a mysterious treasure. What is Dana going to be getting out of the deck? Probably another Poiple. Nope, it's a Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. Check that thing out. All right. You go, Dana. Get that Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX out on the field. All right. I see you. Mewtwo and Mew, not going to be the best attacker in this matchup, considering it is a tag team Pokemon, can get knocked out. And also, Jesse plays a whole lot of power plants in his deck, but there's a whole Mew Mew on the bench. Dana is not scared of his Poiple getting knocked out. He's like, I'm cool. I got one Poiple. I don't need another Poiple. We're Gucci. And then he's got, Ch bro, busted deck. Lily for six. Let's go, Dana. Six new cards. Probably going to get a water energy onto the active ADP, if I had to guess. And he's got a Dedenne GX in that hand as well. So I'm anticipating we're going to see a Water Energy come down onto the ADP, and then maybe next turn if we can find a... I mean, he's got everything he needs to really go off next turn. He's got a great-looking hand, so long as Power Plant doesn't come down. But I'm thinking that Jesse might opt to use that Heat Factory instead, which means that Dana's going to get another turn of abilities, which he definitely wants because he's got a Dedenne GX in his hand, he's got the Quagsire in his hand, he's got an Aganadel in his hand, and he could get a quick ultimate ray, potentially. And the crazy thing about Arceus Dalgopalkia is that, you know, Dana has the potential to get a turn two ultimate ray, which would flood the field with energy, get even more energy in play, and allow Quagsire to get some pretty quick action going on, which would be pretty phenomenal. Jesse's got a welder he's eyeing up now. I'm sure he would love to accelerate more fire energy into play. His hand is pretty big. And Jesse has got to be pretty excited that Dana has two tag team Pokemon GX in play because that really is going to give him a pretty straight straightforward path to victory. If Jesse can just knock out both those tag teams, it's game over. Before, you know, without the Mewtwo and Mew liability on the bench, Jesse's path to victory is looking much more sketchy because he needs to go through the Arceus Dalgopalkia and then potentially three Quagsires. Having to beat three Quagsires is really ridiculous. It looks like Jesse is potentially trying to swing with the Volcanion. Using Welder onto Volcanion. He wants to soften up with Volcanion and then maybe transition into a Flare Strike next turn. But his hand is just dry. I mean, there's no energy in that hand, so he can't use Heat Factory. And it's just going to hit for 50. And Dana could just make it happen. Make it happen, Dana. Let's go. He's got the Naginato. He's got Quagsire in his hand. He's got a Pokemon Communication as well and a Dene GX. So he can use Pokemon Communication, trade probably the Arceus Dialgopalkia or the Quagsire. I personally would like to see him save that Quagsire in his hand and throw that back into the deck. That seems way more valuable to me. Uh, I think he just needs to get... Another Wooper out into play. Oh no, it's Blastoise. There's Blastoise and Piplup, and we see Jesse taking a look at that. Blastoise, let's make it rain, chat. Show your Squirtle emotes if you got them. We got Blastoise and Piplup hitting the field. This thing is a hoss. My goodness. Splash Maker, 150 damage. And you get to attach three water energy from your hand to your Pokemon anyway. Like, if you do heal 50 damage from those Pokemon, uh, my goodness. And that dude is hitting the hitting the bench, because why not? And then, did a change incoming, I'm guessing, right? Or an Erica's. All right, we got an Erica's for a few first. He's going to draw some cards with Erica's Hospitality. And just see three new cards. 
and he's got acro bike and some stuff he doesn't really want to discard but you know discard so that's unfortunate i think he probably should have just gone for the day day change but you know chugging through the deck now he's got acro bike gonna discard whooper uh, in favor of a pokemon communication he's gonna toss quagsire back into the deck um, and i am hoping that we do see a day day change Oh, it's dead. It's it's going to be Volk Prism Star. I don't think Dana has a Metal Energy. So, I don't think Dana is going to be able to get that turn to Arceus Diago Palkia attack. Which is why I really want to see him use Day Day Change this turn. Because that seems essential. He needs to draw cards. He needs to see more of his deck. I think this is a little bit too slow with the Volcanion. And Arceus Dalgapalkia just being in the active. Um, Arceus Dalgapalkia being in the active. Um, it's going to make it really tough. And he's going to use Charge Up on the Naginata, wash it up to the active. He hasn't attached for turn yet, but I don't think Dana realizes the extent to which he could get locked out of the game. Uh, and Dana is primarily a Magic the Gathering player. Uh, Pokemon is not his, uh, his first game. So he is kind of learning on the fly here what to do against these greens decks. And I'm sure Jesse is very thankful uh, that the worst did not happen there. I don't think Dana realizes that his board could get picked apart pretty quickly based on how he's established it. Um, with only one Quagsire on the bench and only one Naganadel on the bench, he could be in a really really tight spot here quickly it's unfortunate we see jesse using green's exploration jesse is going to get to handpick some cards out of the deck and we see jesse's green's deck actually running giant hearth uh, which is interesting in addition to the heat factory he's going to replace his own heat factory get some fire energy out of the deck his and is completely fire dry. I'm realizing now, looking at Jesse's Volcanion, I'm realizing now why I did not recognize the Volcanions earlier that I saw. It's because I'm very used to Volcanion being holographic. I don't think that I have seen the non-holographic Volcanion too often. So that's going to be my excuse, all right, fellas? is that the non-holographic Volcanion threw me for a loop. So Jesse... going to be deciding what he's going to do here. Is he going to use... an attack, high heat blast, or is he just going to use... flare starter? Yep. Get another fire onto his Reshiram Charizard. I agree with that. Dana, I think top decks a supporter, miraculously. Lily. So he's going to get to draw a few more cards. Please find a Metal Energy, Dana. Please, please find a Metal Energy. No Metal Energy. And he is just stuck with Arceus to Hagopalkia in the active. And no way to use it. Really tough beats here for Dana. I think he needed to use that to Denny earlier i'm gonna say it over and over and over again dana if you watch this back there's a couple things you needed to do you needed to not bench that mewtwo and you needed to day day change a couple turns ago so i hope dana watches this back and learns from his gameplay jesse is going to use giant hearth discarding poke gear and at this point Jesse's going to be able to knock out the Arceus Dalgopalkia. Put himself in an extremely favorable position. Um, however, uh, Dana 
could still theoretically just knock out the Reshizard. But with a Jigglypuff, Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff on the bench, wow. I mean, Jesse is really building up his board. And if Dana drops, you know, another GX, it could be in really tough spots. And I think that Jesse is actually just going to take this knockout with the Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff. And this is the safest thing Jesse can do because this thing's not weak to water. So he is. Totally taken this game and taken the slow start from Dana and just switched it around on him, putting himself in a very advantageous position with the Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff taking these three prizes, leaving the Reshizard safe on the bench. And that Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff taking a huge knockout with Jumping Balloon. Dana is going to promote his Blastoise and Piplup Tag Team GX. He's got a kind of rough looking hand here. Uh, if he did eight changes, I mean, he puts himself in the danger zone of Megalopunny and Jigglypuff with that dude on the bench. Three Tag Team Pokemon on the bench. Means that Megalopunny is dealing. 240 damage. So I'm very concerned uh, that Dana is not going to have a way around this. And he could deal 150 damage to the Mega Low Punny, but that's not going to be nearly enough. Jesse, as long as he's got Welder Double Fire in his hand, he could just. Throw three more energy on the Reshizard and deal 300 damage per game with the GX attack. Oh, wow. Yo, Dana has got the Custom Catchers to bring up the Reshi Ram and Charizard. No way, dog. Oh, he's got it. Knockout on the Reshi with Great Catcher. Let's go. That's insane. Oh my gosh. Splash Maker dealing 300 damage to the Reshizard. Now Jesse's got Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff. And he's got to figure out a way out of this one. <laughs> I can't believe Dana had it, bro. He just had the knockout. Absolutely insane. Jesse is just going to promote. A Volcanion with no energy on it and uh, take stock of where he's at now. He could deal 240 damage to something with the Mega Lope, honey. 240 damage isn't quite enough to knock out Blastoise or Mewtwo. Let's see, Bubble Launcher GX. I'm going to read this. It's uh, 100 plus. If your opponent's, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed, if this Pokemon has at least three extra water energy attached to it, it uh, does 150 more damage. So Dana could theoretically bubble launcher GX the Mega Lopunny for a game next turn. If he's able to get three more energy onto <laughs> the Blastoise and Piplup, now Jesse could double custom catcher up quagsire and knock it out that feels really bad and then maybe double custom catcher up to Dene and take it out for game that could be a potential route forward now dana doesn't actually have a way to get three more energy into play next turn because his Naginato can only charge up one. So Dana doesn't actually have access to Bubble Launcher for the next two turns. He needs to buy himself a couple more turns. So I don't think he has a, a great path forward. It looks like Jesse is going to stamp Dana and then probably soften up this Blastoise and Piplup 
with Volcanion, we see Blast. Uh, we see Jesse using Tag Switch to put an energy from the Megalopunny onto the Volcanion. So we're gonna see a high heat blast for 110, and then he can finish off the Blastoise and Pipla for a game with Megalopunny the next turn. So I like this two-step plan from Jesse. Should be safe. I don't think that there's anything. Oh, he's gonna stamp him to three and Jesse and James, making him discard two cards. That's a pretty tough play. I like the Jesse and James with the stamp. I think it's cool. You can totally eliminate your opponent's hand. And 110 damage coming down onto this Blastoise and Pipla. Dana with two cards in hand. That metal energy that he needed to turn to go is now here. And I'm sure that Jesse has energy double custom catcher in his hand. So Dana would need something pretty profound to play out of this. And I think he most definitely needs to. I mean, he's only got a one metal and he's got one water. There's nothing really he could do. He's just going to use Splash Maker and take a knockout. And Jesse has just got game with a fire energy, I was assuming. But he can Green's Exploration, I think, for a fire crystal, get the fire energy back that way. And Jesse will take the game. With Megalopunny and Jigglypuff, dealing 240 damage, and that's it. Jesse taking the dove. Dana's very exciting Nagquag deck. Wow, what a trip. Uh, what a trip for sure. There was definitely potential there. Dana could have taken that game, I feel like, if some things were routed a little bit differently. I think uh, there was definitely some really cool, exciting plays. Getting to watch Dana's Blastoise and Piffle take up a... Restaurant, take out a restaurant and Charizard for three prizes was uh, probably the highlight of my night. Very, very cool decks, and congrats to Jesse Parker on the win. Jesse with the win, and thank you so much to Birdman42 for the sub. Uh, but Jesse, that very creative looking Charizard. Green's Char... I'm just calling it Green's Charizard. Green's I was calling Char it yeah. Green's Resh E. Oh, it's but, hard to not say you know, that. Yeah. You know, so just like Charizard Green, and friends. Yeah. Green's Charizard. Green's Charizard the, I'm yes. assuming you got the Reshizard and the Charizard and Breaks in the deck, right? Yes, yes. So uh, tell us a little bit about your insp inspiration and what your thoughts are of Charizard and Breaks in the Green's engine now. Um, So I got... Actually, the list is actually um, from Omnipoke's channel, cool. uh, Joe Bernard. Uh, he posted the list. It's like one or two cards off his list. Um, it's basically just like Green Zard with like kind of a control package in there, you know, with the, with uh, supposed to be Stamp Surge, you know, um, Jesse James Jesse Mars. James Mars, yeah, yeah, that so, combo you can eliminate your opponent's yeah, hand. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to do, you know, with being able to search out three cards, and you don't have to show your opponent, so it's kind of like a surprise factor, like you know they don't see, because before you'd have to like Greens for your lieutenant search, and I'm like, okay, I know it's coming, but Stamp, um, I, yeah, so which is great in like a best of one format because they uh -huh. don't really see it coming, but um. Yeah, actually, I really like, I like the breaks in Charizard more than I thought I would. Um, it's funny because, like, with, like, hitting, the difference between hitting, like, 180 and 230 is, like, almost non-existent. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, 230 so is still two-hit KOing yeah. all tag teams, and 180 is two. Right, so. right. So, uh, having the Reshizard as, like, a one-of is, I find it to be nicer because, like, obviously, it takes a little longer to charge up, and you don't have Outrage, but a lot of the games, I don't really find myself using Outrage. Right. So, because uh, you're using, um, you know, Volcanian early um, if for you sure. start it and uh, yeah it's really nice it's really you can really just build fat hands and if, if your opponent doesn't stamp you it's like oh you just have a field you have the whole deck at your disposal oh, yeah. the whole it's game crazy. which is yeah. crazy and I really like that you can greens for pieces to just get your Charizard and Breaks in attacking and then you can yes. use Charizard and Breaks in's attack to get you a backup attacker. Yes. So you get the welder and the fire energies or right, the right, pieces right. you need to then welder again next or turn. Or the gust cards you uh, need. Or the gust, yeah. Yeah, all that. So yeah, um, it's really nice because um, also what I didn't see is actually in the Pidgeotto matchup, having that GX move available to you. It's a zero Incredible. or a GX move. Yes. For one energy. Uh, it's so. a nitro tank. It's, yeah, it's a, a thunderclap zone. Yeah. Not a thunderclap zone. What's it? What's it? Uh, uh, full voltage. Or full something. voltage GX. Yeah, full that's voltage, it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's just in line with those. Yeah, it's really uh, nice. So that's really cool. Yeah. And I think gives the Charizard, you know, Greens decks another dimension against the Pidgeotto oh, deck. Oh, yeah. So. And it's really nice sometimes just to use a GX move, like on your first turn. Like if you start Charizard and breaks in, just uh, slap the... Um, 
if you have even just one or two energy in your discard, like using yeah. the GX move to charge up two energies, For so sure. you don't have to use a welder next turn is really good. Because you're not going to double blaze GX in every match. Yeah, right. So. And um, yeah, I think the main thing I changed from Joe's list was uh, he's he's playing great catchers, where I'm playing the custom catchers. So and, I think that's and the good. custom catchers looked really good in the green. Yeah, list I think tonight. that yeah. I, I feel I still am like on the custom catchers. It takes up more deck space, obviously, because you can't just play two right. great catchers and call it a day. But like. There's going to be a lot of Malamar, and getting around those spell tags is really important. So that's why it sure. kind of made me want to play the custom catchers. Awesome yeah. stuff. Well, yep. thank you for yep. uh, shedding no some problem. light on the Greens Charizard deck, and congrats on the wins, Jesse. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you next week. Yeah. And that is it for the Full Group Games League Tournament. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are going to be raiding uh, Tag Team. We've got JW and Riley doing their tag team stream tonight so make sure to go give them a warm warm welcome when we pitch the stream over to them right now thank you guys all so much for watching the production tonight make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com if you're looking for ptcgo codes codes from cosmic eclipse unified minds unbroken bonds we've got them on fullgripcodes.com right now instant delivery when you order codes from the site and also make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all your tcg singles deck boxes sleeves accessories things like that we got them all at fullgripgames.com as well as bulk for booster boxes if you're looking to trade in your bulk we're accepting 3,000 bulk traded for a booster box make sure to check out fullgripgames.com you guys rock thank you so much for the viewership make sure to give the channel a follow if this is one of your first times tuning in uh and uh hopefully you all have a great night let's pitch it on over to riley and jw now make sure to uh tell them i said hey all right take it easy y'all i'll be back tomorrow morning 10 a.m eastern standard time tempest in here with the hot sub thanks so much tempest let's get a big old party over to riley and jw's channel jw just won the Richmond, Virginia Regional Championships. Take it easy, y'all.